ready to go local live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. I want to thank my previous guests, uh, the folks over at Moses Brown School, for giving us an update on how this school year is going and all the developments over there. And earlier uh, today, we had Robert Rutley from Mott & Chase talking about the real estate industry and what's going on, both on the increased prices on homes as well as uh, rental costs. But I want to join with uh, Dr. Michael Fine. He joins us. Uh, after his trip around the country. He's the former director of health for the state of Rhode Island. Dr. Fine, thanks so much for joining us. It's nice to be with you and nice to be home. Good for you. Uh, congratulations on a side note. One of your books, uh, as I think many people know, you are a, uh, a fiction and, and sometimes a nonfiction writer, but uh, just won a New England uh, Authors Award. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Um, let's go to this issue. Uh, we're now approved for five to 11 year olds to get vaccinated. Uh, the program rolled out uh, end of last week. Uh, some kids are getting vaccinated. Uh, the numbers were not overwhelming across the country, uh, but they are beginning to develop. And there is a real issue here and a real opportunity. Many parents um, are complaining about masks in schools. And this potentially, getting children vaccinated has the opportunity to change that narrative. Walk us through those issues. Sure. Um, vaccination is the pathway out of masking in schools. Um, it is the way to put masking behind us. We need to get 95% of school kids vaccinated, like we do for every other vaccine that, we're re that we require for school entry. Um, but once those kids are vaccinated and once we can get community transmission down, I don't see any need for masking. Um, the sooner we get that done, the better. And if we don't get it done by spring, then shame on us. This is this has been burdensome. You know, nobody likes the masking thing. Uh, and this is the opportunity to get rid of it. Uh, the way to do it is to get every kid vaccinated. And all of us work together on community transmission, both at the same time. Uh, Dr. Fine, you know, as, as, as a parent and before that, as a student, I remember you had to get your vaccinations before you could enter school. You weren't allowed to start school until you got your vaccinations on a host of different uh, potential threats. Uh, why is this so tricky here? And why aren't government leaders mandating that children returning to school in January have to be vaccinated? Josh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I was with my colleagues at the uh, at the uh, American Public Health Association uh, annual meeting in Denver, um, and there was real consensus that uh, all schools ought to require uh, COVID-19 vaccine for school entry as soon as it was approved. Um, why that's not happening is sort of a mystery to me. Happened in California, um, but as I have tested the idea of masking and getting rid of masking with colleagues. Everybody in public health says the same thing. Require COVID-19 masking uh, 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 vaccination for school entry and we will be done. This is not rocket science. We just got to get it done. So whose job or whose decision is it to move forward with that in Rhode Island? Is that a edict from the governor? Does it require a law from the Rhode Island General Assembly? Or is that in the regulatory authority of the Rhode Island Department of Health? It is in the regulatory authority of the Rhode Island Department of Health. There is a regulatory process. Um, you know, we've done this with other vaccines. Uh, when I was at the department, we did the HPV vaccine and included it in, in, in the requirements. It's not that complicated. The regulatory process uh, invites public comment and responds to public comment. It's a good and healthy process. We just need to use it. It takes a couple of months to get it through, you know, just to, to get the process done, probably three, maybe three and a half or four months. Um, but once you start it, it, go, it can go through fairly effectively um, unless somebody tries to get in the way. And what do you mean by somebody gets in the way? A governor or a legislator? Whom? A governor or a legislature. You know, in 40, I can't remember the exact number, but in almost every state in the country, um, legislators have introduced uh, uh, legislation to reduce or remove 
public health authority. Um, and, you know, we see this happening over and over again, and I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, in the Declaration of Independence, it's pretty clear, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Life comes first. You can't have liberty and pursuit of happiness without it. You know, and the way to, to secure it um, is by good public health. Uh, you're now seeing a, a narrative, you saw it with uh, the episode involving Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers in which he clearly misled the press, his team, and, and the public relative to whether or not he had uh, received uh, vaccination. You saw it, I believe, today. The actor Matthew McConaughey is urging that uh, school children not be mandated to be vaccinated. Um, put aside the fact that neither Aaron Rodgers or Matthew McConaughey have any expertise in much of anything other than uh, stage acting and uh, playing football, uh, how unhelpful is the behavior by these two uh, pseudo-celebrities? Hugely unhelpful. I mean, this is the time for every celebrity in the United States to line up and hold out their arm and say, come, vaccinate, come get vaccinated. I did you know, for everybody to get vaccinated on television, because this is easy. You know, this is easy, quick, and it is such not a big deal. We are making a mountain out of a molehill. There is clearly something going on here that has nothing to do with the public's health um, or with protecting the health and safety of all Americans. Um, Dr. Fine, let's jump over to the numbers we've seen in the past few days after weeks of decreasing numbers. We saw the transmission rate drop from, I think, a high of, call it 250, down to uh, the low, just over 100. Now it's cropping back up. I think it's up to 170 or something, back it's again, 180. 180. 183 today. 183, we're seeing the infection rate, the number of those tested is cropping up. It was 5.2 on Monday. It's been over three both of the last two days. We're just seeing numbers move up. Um, we're also seeing a significant outbreak in Europe. Uh, in certain regions, it's the worst it's ever been. We've generally trailed Europe by about four to six weeks. That's been sort of the very consistent over the last 20 months. Should we be, will we see an intersection of increasing cases in the United States plus the increase uh, transmission coming from Europe via travelers, et cetera? And will we see a spike sometime November, December, uh, as we had last year? I think we will. Um, I think it's more uh, from our getting lax about things like ma masking. And I think we have a big risk that Europe doesn't have, um, which is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is this incredible time where everybody gets together, and it's a wonderful opportunity to spread disease around. Um, which is what I fear will happen unless we jump in um, and change what we're doing right now. We can stop this surge if we act um, and do better than the Europeans have been doing, but we have to put our nose to the grindstone and get the work done. And Dr. Fine, we're not hearing guidance from government entities relative to Thanksgiving. We haven't heard about, hey, stay home this year like we did maybe not in Rhode Island, but in other states uh, and at the federal level. Um, where's that narrative and how high is the risk? We're not going to see a spike like we saw last year because of the higher, much higher level of protection. So many Americans have been vaccinated, but we still run a risk of significant uh, increase in the number of cases, number of infections. Yeah, and, partic and particularly hospitalizations and deaths in people who are, who are uh, unvaccinated three to 10 times the number of hospitalizations and deaths um, from the unvaccinated. Uh, I don't know why we haven't been hearing something from government. Uh, this is a time to jump in and, you know, sort of coach people. You know, we are almost at the end of this. Next spring, I think we're pretty much done if we get everybody vaccinated and figure out how to do stuff like mask inside. You know, I was in Canada in, in Toronto in September, and I heard from my son who lives there in the last week or two, um, the transmission in Canada 
is not our 183 cases per 100,000 per week. It's 13 cases per 100,000 per week. And they don't have an, they don't have any deaths. You know, the diff and what do they do different? You know, they mask inside um, and they they pay clear attention to who's coming across the border and make sure that they're tested before they come. You okay. know, there are. Yeah, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. There are protocols that would let us reduce this. We just got to do them. So give us your guidance recommendations to families who are getting together for Thanksgiving. Start with a family that all the adults are vaccinated, but maybe all the children are not. How should they handle Thanksgiving? I think basically everybody who's got unvaccinated and vaccinated people together um, should get uh, a bunch of the, uh, the rapid tests that you can do at home. You can get them from the local pharmacy and everybody should test twice the morning of, of Thanksgiving. Um, if you do that, um, then the likelihood of somebody who's transmitting disease, transmitting it to someone else is next to nothing. And that will protect everybody. I think that's so, the real way to proceed. So by the rapid test, everybody takes it twice in the twice. morning and then, and then get together and have a great time. Yeah. No, okay, so let's go, let's go through the next scenario. Um, some adults are vaccinated, some adults aren't vaccinated, the children aren't vaccinated. Should that group be getting together? Um, well, you know, the people who aren't vaccinated have made it clear they're willing to sustain the risk of hospitalization and death. Um, you know, whenever you think about COVID, you have to think about two components. First, what is the risk to the, to the individual people? And the other is, what is the risk uh, to the trans about the transmission of disease? Um, if you get uh, unvaccinated and vaccinated people together, the people who are at risk in, of hospitalization and death primarily, particularly if they're younger people, are the people who are unvaccinated. And they've made it clear they don't care. Um, you know, I, I, when, when you get a bunch of people together, the way to prevent transmission is to test everybody the morning of. And if you do that, then I think you won't, you at least won't create more transmission by getting everybody together if you exclude anybody who's positive. Pretty simple. Okay, and then obviously we'll skip the last scenario. Most people aren't vaccinated. They're on their own, right? We, 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 we can't give a lot of guidance on that scenario. Yeah, yeah, they, they've decided that they wanna roll the dice. Um, so, you know, I can't help them with that. You know, if they wanna, if they wanna roll the dice and be safe, um, they could, you know, they could get everybody tested the morning of. Um, that's, you know, that's a way they could protect themselves in one way, even if they're not willing to protect themselves in the other way. You know, I'd say everybody should just go out and get vaccinated today and get it over with. This is not a big deal. And then the uh, last thing I'd like to talk about is booster shots. Um, it, it, clearly, in the case of Johnson & Johnson, a anyone who's gotten Johnson & Johnson needs a second shot and probably a third shot as quickly as possible. Is that, is that the learning we have right now? Absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, a second and very likely a third shot. Um, and it does not have to and probably shouldn't be Johnson & Johnson. It should be one of the other vaccines. Um, either, looks, either, either Pfizer or Moderna. Or Moderna, right. Um, it looks like uh, people who got Pfizer may benefit a little bit um, if they get Moderna as a booster but getting Pfizer as a booster is perfectly fine. And people who got Moderna, um, as far as I can tell from looking at the numbers, should just as well get Moderna. There's no advantage from getting a different vaccine for that group. Okay, last thing. You know, uh, this is gonna get complicated. It's gonna get complicated quickly. The cases are in all likelihood going to rise. We see the trends. We've done this enough in the past. The national numbers are starting to crop up. Yesterday, I think, the New York Times national 14 day rolling average was up around 5% again today, another 5%. We're seeing the transmission rate, not quite double in Rhode Island in a week, but up a bit more than 50% in a week. Um, what's your recommendation across the board to how people should treat this? This is not lock in your house and pull down the shades period, but there is a higher level of consciousness that is, that is needed for 
for all Rhode Islanders, those vaccinated and those who are not. Yeah, and and here's what, what everybody should do. First, everybody should mask inside again, period, until uh, community transmission goes down below the high transmission level. Second, older people and people with chronic disease should stay home. This is not a time to go gallivanting around with high transmission, even if you're vaccinated, you want to stay home. Um, you want to get your groceries sent to you again. Um, this isn't going to be forever. Um, this is a period of, of, a, of a month or two or three, and then we can, can get back to normal again. But for right now, if you're even if you're vaccinated, um, I would stay home if you're at high risk. Um, it's just the wiser course, and it's, easy, it's relatively easy to do. Dr. Michael Fine, I greatly appreciate you checking in with us again this week. Congratulations on your award and your safe travel around the country. For everybody else, stay tuned for updates across the board on Go Local. And as we always say, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, please do so. Don't be Aaron Rodgers. Don't be that guy. Uh, be safe. Keep your family safe. The last thing you want to do is go to a family gathering and, and either get sick uh, and end up in the hospital or or have that impact on another family member. Uh, it would be a heartbreaking thing. So please get vaccinated. And if you haven't gotten your booster shot, look into it, get ready to get started uh, and uh, get that third shot that you need uh, as soon as possible. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Josh.